Let's work together to inspire communities of song that sing together for the joy of doing it and to the glory of God. The organist as listener. As organists, we have to walk a fine line between leading and listening and following. Here's a hymn that invites everyone to sing, and it's a good illustration of the point of today's video. So this hymn has several things going for it as far as a congregational singer is concerned. It has a repeated Alleluia Amen, so no text to worry about. And it has several repeated parts within the hymn. So it's no wonder that many congregations know this hymn well, and even if they don't, they catch on rather quickly. Now in the hymnal I'm using today, it has three stanzas. And as I'm going through those stanzas, I am thinking about a congregation becoming ever more familiar with the melody and even the harmonies of this hymn. And so I'm going to help them to take over certain parts, to be independent with certain parts. And then I'm going to really concentrate on the text in how I play so that as their attention can wander after they've become familiar with a hymn, they are pulled back into this glorious text. Just so you know, here's the text as it appears in this hymnal. Come, Christians, join to sing Alleluia, Amen. Loud praise to Christ our King, Alleluia, Amen. Let all with heart and voice before his throne rejoice. Praise is his gracious choice. Alleluia. Amen. Come, lift your hearts on high. Alleluia. Amen. Let praises fill the sky. Alleluia. Amen. He is our guide and friend. Our needs he will attend. His love shall never end. Alleluia. Amen. Praise yet the Lord again. Alleluia, amen. Life shall not end the strain. Alleluia, amen. On heaven's blissful shore, his goodness will adore, singing forevermore. Alleluia, amen. It doesn't really matter if the text in your hymnal differs from that one. What matters is that the text that you and your congregation are singing means something. So try to illustrate it by how you play. Not every note, not every word by any means, but the concept. What does singing forevermore mean? What does life shall not end the strain of Alleluia, Amen? What does it mean for all Christians to sing together?
So several things I did in that one playthrough of this hymn with my imaginary congregation. I just wanted to point out a few things. One is that my introduction, I hope, illustrated more and more people gathering together to sing Alleluia. Another was as the congregation became more confident in their singing, I was free to do other things, to add additional notes on the top of the melodic line or laying out, sometimes for a single note, sometimes for a phrase, Alleluia, Amen. I never removed the organ completely. I might do that if a congregation was very confident, but most of the time I leave in the bass notes to give them that foundation and that rhythmic drive moving forward. In the second and third stanzas, when it talked about increasing our alleluias and singing forevermore, I used the expression pedal with reeds behind the swell shades so that that bloom and that feeling of singing forevermore would become part of the congregation. Don't forget that you have a swell pedal, most organs have a swell pedal that you can use in playing hymns. And at the end, I illustrated singing forevermore. Now I don't do this very often, but in a hymn that's well known and that talks about singing forevermore, I know that the congregation will be confident in their ending of the hymn. I choose to play a deceptive cadence that goes with the notes that they're singing, even if they're singing in harmony, and gives me the opportunity to illustrate singing forevermore by extending that last measure or two with just the organ playing.